I'm here today with Stephen Wade. He's an insurance agent, and we're going to talk about a lot of interesting things that divorce will have an effect on when it comes to your insurance, whether that be health insurance or automobile insurance or disability insurance and things like that. And it pays to be aware of how these things are affected in divorce. So before we go any further, would you just give everyone your name, the company, and the contact information for your company so that if they want to uh, talk to you and answer more questions, they'll know where to go. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So my name is Stephen Wade, and you can get a hold of me on my number at 435-669-1263. And my email is stephenwadeinsurance at gmail.com. And that's, my name is spelled with a V as in Victor, so S-T-E-V-E-N-W-A-D-E, -E -E, insurance at gmail.com. Great. The first thing we're going to talk about then is a lot of people don't understand what happens to health insurance coverage in a divorce situation. And depending upon whether you have that through your employer or whether you have an individual policy you're paying for you know, privately, that can have an effect. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about what happens if uh, typically, now I know that there could be a circumstance where you might have an employer with an insurer that will allow you to still have your ex-spouse on an insurance policy. But generally speaking, has that been your experience? Yeah, no, typically not. When you get divorced, you separate insurances, you separate um, you know, all assets, right? And so when you're, when you're separating your family, um, yeah, you just you typically separate the insurance. Right? Meaning that if you are covered by your spouse's insurance through the employer's policy, you are no longer insured when the decree of right. divorce is issued. Okay, now is that the same if, let's assume that you don't have insurance through an employer. You might be self-employed or you might be working for a company that's too small to offer those benefits. Mm -hmm. Can you keep your spouse on your health insurance policy after that? Or does that policy also require you to cut your spouse off, so to speak? Um, t typically when we're, when we're dealing with divorce, it is cleaner to just to cut that, Okay. right? And if you're going to keep your spouse on your policy. I mean, I've seen, I've seen it where if you're an individual like in a self-employed policy and you still want to have them on, typically that's, they try to stay away from that, okay. right? So if you're just going to keep it very clear and cut as, okay, mother, father, and children, um, and you're on an individual policy, let's say, um, the f whoever has, my best advice is whoever has the tax dependents should also provide the health insurance for them because I see in so many situations that, so like if you're going to switch, if you have two children okay. and you're each going to have one and that's, that's, your, claim for that's tax your claim purposes. for tax purposes, then, okay. then, whoever, then if you have that child, keep that child on your insurance and then if the mother has one child, then keep that on their insurance. It just makes it so much more simpler. If you only have one child and you're taking turns the year, then you can switch that child on insurances every November 1st to December 15 is open enrollment and you could during that time period you can add your child to your insurance plan for that year that you're going to be claiming that child but on you, insurance. But you can't claim you, you can't have coverage for the child if you're not claiming that child as a dependent for tax purposes. You can if you're paying the full price. So typically oh, okay. an insurance plan costs 200 for a child it can be a little bit under 200 for an adult 250 300. dollars Okay. Um, if you're not dealing with Obamacare and going through the marketplace to receive the subsidies or tax credits, then you, you can just pay a $200 plan for your child and there's no worries about tax filing at all. So you can just buy an insurance plan full price, that's totally acceptable. Okay. But if you are claiming your child and trying to get access to the marketplace because it's too, let's say you have four kits and an insurance plan costs $1,000, that's expensive. Okay. If you want to, and you're only making fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a year, you can qualify. Roughly speaking, in those mm -hmm. numbers, you can qualify for through the marketplace a subsidy or a tax credit applied to your health insurance. At instead of being a thousand, it's two hundred dollars for the whole family. For the whole family, wow, saves you eight hundred dollars a month. But only if you're claiming those that's children, exactly, or at least one child. As a, oh, that's nasty. You have for every, every person that's on your, that you're claiming is a tax dependent, ha, the tax return has to match the health insurance. If you're getting, if you're talking about Obamacare, for every if you're year you about, have coverage. So right. So wow. if you if you have four kids, let's just stay on that example, mm -hmm. and you um, 
are claiming them on your taxes and you can get and you're making that right amount of middle class income you can take it you can take it you can use the marketplace and use those tax credits apply them to you and but if that child is claimed on the other spouses and you're trying to get the tax credits mm -hmm. to apply to the other spouse the ex-spouse and trying to if you don't have that child as your dependent you can't take you can't get them on your insurance through the Obamacare through the marketplace the ACA and get insurance the discount the subsidy it's called a tax credit if you if you're paying full price you can it's totally mm -hmm. different it's, it's clear black and white if you're paying full price, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Okay. But if you're taking advantage of the marketplace subsidy, so I, I deal with these all the time, and it can be a nightmare sometimes. So it's really good going into the divorce if they know, okay, with insurance, I mean, they just to think about it, if I'm claiming this kid on my taxes, then it's probably better for me to claim, to help them with the insurance. Okay. And just separate. Yeah, because well, as you may be aware, oftentimes the parties will share the cost of the insurance equally. And so if I'm sharing half the cost of $1,000 as opposed to half the cost of $200, that's a savings not only for the other parent, but for myself. All right, well, this is interesting. Let's talk about a worst case scenario then where you've got one child. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're saying that if, that if you're going through the marketplace through the, uh, through the ACA or the Obamacare kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of situation, if you're going to if you're going to sh claim, let, you've heard about situations where I'll claim the child on my taxes one year, and then my ex mm -hmm. will claim the child the next year. You're saying that I wouldn't be able to insure that child every single year, but only the years where I'm making the claim. If you're going Claiming through that child, if you're going through the marketplace, the ACA, the marketplace. taking advantage, if you're taking mm -hmm. the tax credit, that's correct. You can't take claim that child on your health insurance and get that tax credit if you. Are not claiming them on your taxes. So you might, even though, and it might be worthwhile. You might save enough money where it would be worthwhile to add your child every other year and drop them, have them drop out every other year. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a very interesting. interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, that's interesting. that's worth the cost of admission right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about. Uh, let's talk about what can somebody do when they are getting divorced, right? So they're, they're, they know that they're going to lose this coverage potentially, or they've decided that I don't want to remain on my ex-spouse's policy if that's even a possibility to begin with. Mm -hmm. What should people be doing? A lot of people may have thought, you know, I've never had to look for insurance. Mm -hmm. I got married and throughout the time that I've been married, it was either something that was through my employer or my spouse's employer. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of in a weird situation. I may not have a new job, or I may mm -hmm. be finding myself in a self-employed situation. Yeah. What's the best way for people to look for insurance now? So, uh, my recommendation is to contact a broker like myself or another broker who has is contracted with multiple insurance companies and can shop out for them to offer them very competitive prices. But then, something that's very important to know is timing for getting insurance. It's a little bit different than uh, car insurance or li mm -hmm. or um, disability insurance. You can buy those at any time you'd like, right? Okay. You can go to, but health insurance, November 1st to December 15th is open enrollment. It's a very important time on the individual market. If you're, let's say there's a husband who's with a company providing insurance for the whole family, getting divorced, and then this mother is now separate and the father, let's say, is claiming them as tax dependents and she's by herself. She's divorced, right? And she has, outside of open enrollment window, November 1st to December 15th, she has 60 days from the time she either she loses the insurance and gets kicked off of the company's insurance mm -hmm. to con to contact somebody like myself and to enroll if she if she misses that 60 day window then she's kind of in a in difficult in situation limbo, in the limbo yeah where she has to wait till November to enroll for the next year so so that's that's something that I think is very important, is important. to know that once the, the loss of insurance happened let's say it just happened it's it's May now let's say that happened the end of April they lost benefits so they have May June to get a new in individual policy or to if they get on with an employer who offers it then they can go right yeah, on to right the employer yeah. okay. but on the and then if we're not talking about company or group insurance then we're talking about an individual policy they have there's a little there's those restrictions which would be imp particularly important if you're trying to work well if you're trying to work through the marketplace and you've got the one child and you're trying to balance them mm -hmm. okay Here's something that a lot of people ask about. What does it mean for a child to have double coverage by both of his or her parents? Mm -hmm. And how does that work? Does that mean that there's just a huge pot of money to take care of this child in the event that health insurance has to pay for some treatment or procedure? How does that work? So let's say that the mother and the father, they have this one child and they both, let's say they both have company insurance and they both wanted okay. to get the baby or the child on an insurance policy. 
One of them is just going to be a designated primary insurance, and yeah. that it's going to be run through that. And if it's not covering a certain aspect or the, the child needs, or then the secondary insurance can kick in now after that. But now, it's not ne really necessary. Right, because here's a question. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, that means I can buy cheap insurance. It's like half the coverage I'd normally have because if we're double covered, then one insurance company will cover half the cost and the other insurance right. company will cover half the cost. But that's not really what double... No. You can see why people would think that. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, double coverage, you know, I, I share my, my uh, part of the burden and you cover yours. So it really is, it's like, one of you is going to cover this and the other one kicks in only if there's what coverage that the other policy doesn't have mm -hmm. or what if it's what if you reach the limits of the first policy does the other one kick in at that point or can it you see what i'm saying so yeah on in, on what's really nice if they're on an ACA affordable care act plan through their company let's say it's select health or united or regents blue cross these big insurance companies they have out of pocket maximums let's say the out of pocket maximum is 7200 yeah. And if they're running it through their primary company, once they hit that out-of-pocket maximum, that insurance company will pay for 100%. If they have a $100,000 medical bill and they've already paid their out-of-pocket maximum, the consumer has, they're done. Is so that, here's, yeah, is so that, here's a silly question. So there's a, there's a, a procedure that costs $150,000. Mm -hmm. So primary, uh, primary parents' policy runs out of money. Can then the secondary parents' policy pay the other... The, so the it, it depends balance. on the policy. The nice thing about the ACA, like a Select Health, Regents, United, these big companies, is there's no amount of money that they want. They will not pay if it's a million, two million, three million dollars. Okay. Am, am I answering your question? You is are answering right? my so question. So they they'll keep paying it. We had a client who had cancer and he hit his out-of-pocket maximum in a day after he's in the hospital and doing all these procedures of mm -hmm. seven thousand dollars. But he racked up a bill of over a million dollars and. Um, and, you know, okay. I just stay in the hospital for several weeks and months even, and and in this situation, they the insurance company, there's no, that's really nice for the consumer. That's they really have, interesting. They have a million, two million dollars of medical bills. The insurance company will pay 100% after if it's one of those qualified plans. Yeah. So what would be the purpose of having double coverage? Just, it feels good, but other than that, there really doesn't seem I really to be don't know if there's too many, yeah, I don't, there's not too many okay. benefits of being double coverage unless the mother, unless, let's say there's a select health policy and then that the father's providing through his company and then there's a regent's policy and okay. the regent's policy covers a type of autism that the select health policy okay. wouldn't cover and the mother wants to make sure that child, that child has autism and select health is not covering that. Okay, then it might be nice to have the mother to have a double coverage. Might to, give to you a broader sure. range of coverage, right. but not necessarily giving you a greater amount of That's coverage. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing this with us, and I know that you've got to get to another important meeting. So we're grateful that you took the time with That's us fine. today to do that. Before we go, would you please give them one more time your name and contact information? Yeah. So Stephen Wade, happy to help with health insurance, home and auto, disability. I work with multiple different insurance companies. Um, in all fields of insurance. My name is Stephen Wade at 435-669-1263 and stephenwadeinsurance at gmail.com. You can reach me at either one of those. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.